church, let's give King Jesus a big ovation of worship in this place. Come on, we're talking about a risen Savior. Is there anybody that's excited in this room that Jesus Christ is risen? Come on, give him three more seconds of your best praise. I love that. I love that. I love that. And if you feel comfortable, I know it may be your first time here. Would you just stretch your hands towards heaven and just let's pray together. Jesus, we honor you. We lift you up, King Jesus. We thank you so much that you're not a dead Savior, but you're a risen Savior. And that because you live, man, life is worth living. Life is worth going after and telling other people about you, Jesus. And so, God, we are so thankful to be in this place. We're so thankful to sing about you. We're so thankful to be able to open up your word and be able to preach your word today. God, we just pray that your spirit would speak through the words that are going to come forth today. God, that you would be glorified, Jesus, that you would be lifted up, and that, Jesus, you would be praised because you're the king. And you're the king of all kings, and you're the Lord of our lords. And without you, none of this is worth doing, because Jesus, you're the point. We love you, we honor you, and we lift your name. In Jesus' name that we pray, and everybody say it. I said everybody say it. Come on, one more time. Let's give it up for King Jesus. Yeah, I love that. I love that, I love that, I love that, I love that. Well, if you don't mind, stay standing for just a second. I've seen a couple of great pastor friends and other people that have done this before, and I've done it over the last couple of weeks. I just really enjoyed just standing in honor of God's word together. We're going to be reading uh, from something today. We're in a, uh, finishing up a series uh, about miracles. Literally, changing history has been our series. We've been talking about the miracles of Jesus. I think this is the best miracle of all right here. And this is what the Bible says in Mark chapter 16. If you're ready for the word, say, I'm ready. Love it. Here we go. This is what it says in verse 1. It says, Saturday evening. When the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so that they could anoint Jesus' body. And verse 2 says this, very early. Somebody shout, very early. Kind of like that 930 crowd on Sunday, right? Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. And on the way, they were asking each other, like, this is funny right here, I love this. Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And I love this part, but it says that they arrived, they looked up, and they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. Come on, somebody, that's why we shout right there, right? And in verse 5, watch this, I'll talk to you about it in just a few minutes. When they entered the tomb... They saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. Somebody say, oh, like it. Here we go. Women were shocked, but the angel said, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus from Nazareth who was crucified. But watch this, and this is why we get excited, church. He isn't in here. He is risen from the dead. Come on, somebody. I love that. I want you to tap your neighbor, and I want you to tell them the title of today's message. It's got a little bit of redneck vernacular with it, but say this. Hashtag, he ain't in there. Go ahead, tell your neighbor, he ain't in there. He ain't in there. He ain't in there. I love it. I love it. Let me pray one more time. Jesus, we thank you so much for today. We honor you. We lift up your name, King Jesus. I pray that today you would speak to us, and it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said a good amen, amen, amen. You guys go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat all across this room. I'm going to take a swig of water really quick. And hey, I would just love to welcome everybody that's watching online today. Can we put our hands together and welcome everybody in that's tuning in online? Welcome them in doing that. I love that. I love that. Hey, listen, we're so glad that you're here. Glad that you're spending Easter with us. Maybe it's later on at night. That's okay. We're glad you're here. And uh, I'm just so excited to see you guys. I'm so thankful to be in the room with you again like we talked about. Last year we didn't have a chance to gather together in person. And so this year being able to just worship with you on Easter Sunday. And there's something about that. I love it. And I'm really glad that you're here. Hashtag he ain't in there. Somebody shout hashtag he ain't in there. Yeah, I like that. All right. Don't let this sport coat fool you. I got a little redneck under here too. All right. But hey, I'm just so glad that we get a chance to talk about uh, this idea of he ain't in there today. And this is what I know is that the last year has really been filled with a lot of bad news for the most part, right? Can we all agree just kind of starting off, even 2020 in, in general, last year, 
was just a tough year. Can everybody agree on that? Come on, wave at me if you can agree 2020 was a really hard year. I think all of us can agree. It was just filled with bad news, right? Lots of bad news. Bad news coming at us over and over and over again. I think about how even the year kind of kicked off and how it started. It was like literally the, the, the global, pretty much global funeral of an uh, a NBA superstar. Whether you watch the, the basketball or not, you know who Kobe Bryant is. And kind of kicked off with that helicopter uh, crash that he was in. And so like the world was mourning. And then on the backside of that, just a few months later, man, we see this pandemic rear its ugly head. And, and literally it just seems like, you know, people were losing their lives. Man, a lot of people lost their lives to the coronavirus. And, and, and last year was just full of bad news. I think about it, even on our level, um, just as a church, uh, like a lot of bad news, because again, we couldn't even meet on Easter together, right? The day that really we celebrate together the risen Savior, and we couldn't even have an in-person gathering together. Uh, that was a little bit of bad news last year. I think about bad news that we had uh, all through last year just as a personal family, just some things that had happened. But I think that uh, what I know and what I've kind of experienced in the past and you can agree with me or not, and I need y'all to help me today. I know you know, some of you may be visiting for the first time, or you may be here, but your boy needs a little bit of help up here on stage while I preach, all right? So if y'all got to say, preach it, white boy, go ahead. You got to say whatever you want to do, just say it, and I'm going to be with you, all right? Everybody good with that? All right, I like it. Here we go. So, so I think about just last year, even personally, just some challenges that Allie and I, kind of some bad news we had to go through. But how many of you know that a little bit of good news goes a long way? Right? I, I think about that. I think about in the middle of all that craziness last year, we found out a little bit of good news that we found out that we were having twin baby girls. Come on, somebody, right? So, so even in the midst of the bad, we found out that we were having, I, I wanted to, uh, we, no, I, I was going to say something that I, I knew this was going to be on, on the air, so I'm not going to do that. We were not socially distancing, okay? I'm just going to say that. So, so we had twins. And we had babies last year, so even in the midst of a bad year, like we had some good news to come out of it, right? I think about in the midst of a bad year, even as a church, not bad, but just the fact that for 14 weeks that we couldn't gather together in person, that's a tough one, right? I love being in the room. There's something about being here, right? And I just want to invite everybody that's watching online, if you're doing it out of health, I absolutely understand that. But let me encourage you, if it's out of habit, come on back. There ain't nothing like being in the room, y'all, is that right? And nothing like being in the room, so we're going to invite you back. But I'll just tell you, even in the midst of bad news of not being able to meet, I know that God is always doing something. He's always working something out. And so I got a little bit of good news. I want to tell you about our church and about a potential facility that we got going on. But you're going to have to come back next week because I'm going to tell you next week. All right, then. I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to drip that on you just a little bit. You got to come back next week. I might be able to tell something uh, next week to you. But, uh, again, I want to just encourage you. That little bit of good news in the midst of bad news goes a long way, right? Think about it. I want you to write this down. I believe that note takers are history makers, so I want you to write this down. very first thing I want you to write down, though, is knowing the bad news. When you know it, when you know that the bad news is there, when you recognize it, that makes the good news even better, right? Makes the good news even better. Getting bad news makes the good news even better. Because let's be real. We all love good news, right? How many of y'all love good news? Come on, wave at me right here. We love getting good news. We love getting a good report. We love getting that, that, that stimmy check. We love whatever, right? We love getting a little extra bank, a little count in the money. That's good. We like that. Okay, we love good news. But I'll just tell you really quickly um, that, that if we never had any bad news, would we really appreciate the goodness of the good news, right? I think we have to just really weigh that out sometimes because the bad news is really bad, and that just makes the good news even better. I think about it. It's good to know that, like, even when we're talking about God, it's good to know that God is a healer, but it's even better news to know that God is a healer when you have a sickness in your body, right? It's good to know that God is a provider, but it's even better news to know that God is a provider when you're broke and you're completely out of options, right? It's good to know that God is a protector, but it's even better to know that God is a protector when you're being attacked on all sides and you feel like you're getting stabbed in the back and everything else, right? It's good to know that God is your strength. It's even better news to know that God is your strength even when you can't even get out of bed in the morning because you're so depressed, right? That it's good to know that God is a restorer, that he is a rebuilder, but it's even better news when you've got something that you're dealing with that is broken and busted and it's crashed, right? 
It's good news to know that God is a forgiver, but guess what? It's even better news to know that God is a forgiver when you and I realize that we are sinners, that we are far from God, that I could do nothing to earn the salvation from Jesus. It had to come through him and by him and because of him. And yet that's good news, but it's good news to know. It's even better news when we realize there's nothing that we could do to earn that and that Jesus is a forgiver. It's good news to know that God is resurrection and life, but it's even better news to know that God is resurrection and life when you and I realize that because of our sin, we are dead in our sin. Is there anybody thankful in this place right now that there's a God that came to give us life and give us life abundantly? Come on, let's all give Jesus a big hand of praise. I fired up on Easter. Y'all just get ready, all right? Uh, and I love it. I love it. This is where our story comes in that we just read in Mark chapter 16. Because what happens is, um, uh, and I don't know if you know the story of kind of where uh, Jesus w- was crucified on Friday. Let me kind of back it up just a little bit. Is that we kind of started with his triumphant entry into the city. And people are waving palm branches. They're laying them down on the street. They're thinking, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, right? And so they're, this is kind of at the beginning of the week. And Jesus is making his way into the city, and and they're thinking that Jesus is literally coming to establish an earthly kingdom. Like, he's going to come and take over everything, right? He's going to come over and do whatever he's got to do. He's going to take it all over. But Jesus, how many of you know, was coming for a different kind of kingdom, right? He was coming not for an earthly kingdom, for a heavenly kingdom. And so I think about that, and Jesus is coming in, and and, and throughout the week, like midweek, he's he's sharing a meal with his disciples called the Passover meal. and, and, And so that's taking place, and then he walks through kind of what we did last week together with communion about how he would be the Passover lamb, that he would be the sacrifice in just a few days, that he was going to go to the cross and be the sacrifice for everybody. And so he has this communion, this Lord's Supper with his disciples, and we had a chance to take that last week together, and that's always special as a church. And, and so I, I, that happens, and then what happens is, is that one of his disciples sells him out, right? I don't know if you ever have been sold out or you ever had somebody that, that maybe has gone behind your back or done something. You know how that feels. Uh, I, I'll just tell you and I'll encourage you. Jesus knows exactly what that feels like as well. And he had one of his disciples that went and, and they betrayed him and they sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. And the guards, they arrested him. And after they arrested him, what they did was that they put him in front of a bogus court. And they just like just ran him through the, the system and said, you know what, crucify him. And on Friday, Jesus is crucified on a cross. Right, on Friday, like literally, you're talking about some bad news for the people that follow Jesus. Friday was bad news for them. Right? Friday was a terrible day. Friday was a day that, that we call Good Friday, but it wasn't good for them back then. Right? It was a bad news Friday. Everybody thought that Jesus was the Messiah and, and he was coming to save us. and He was coming to do all of that. Why? Messiahs don't die. Right? Like messiahs don't. Don't, don't die. That, like, why is he dead? Like, what is going on? And you got to realize all the disciples had literally left everything that they had to follow Jesus. They left their fishing boats, their nets, all of that stuff. And guess what they decided to do? They said, you know what? The guy that we just spent three years serving, the guy that we just followed around and watched him do miracle after miracle after miracle, he's dead. I don't know about you, but what an empty feeling that would have felt like on Friday and Saturday. What bad news Friday and Saturday would have felt like uh, if you were a disciple. So they go back to doing what they were doing before they knew Jesus. They're fishing. They're doing all of that stuff. And then we see that Friday it was dark. Saturday it was silent. As the song says, surely it was through. Right? It was over. Man, we, no, no hope. Everything that we just given our life up for to follow, guess what? The disciples are saying, we don't have any hope. It's over. And then we see some women on Saturday from our story. They're gathering some spices. Let me hear from all the ladies in the room. Say, hey. That's y'all ladies. Y'all are heading to the tomb. And I love what happens in this story. And what, what happens with the ladies is they're having this conversation as they're walking to the tomb. But, but they're going to pay respects to the, the body of Jesus, right? They're going to pay respects to the Savior that they had just given their life to follow to and, and believe that Jesus really was the Messiah. And what I want us to think about is bad news infiltrated Friday and Saturday, right? It was full of bad news. There was no hope. There was nothing that they thought on the horizon as they're heading to the tomb. And watch what happens in Mark chapter two, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 2. It says, very early. Somebody shout, very early. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, 
they were on their way to the tomb. Anybody ever, anybody out there ever experienced a sunrise? Come on, wave at me. This means yes to Kentucky if you don't want to wave. Yes, you've been there. Okay, like you've experienced sunrise. Some of y'all got up this morning early and you experienced a sunrise, right? I think that a sunrise, uh, maybe you've experienced it on the beach. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a sunrise on the beach. It's pretty incredible, right? That would be awesome to experience it on the beach. I don't know about you, but like I said, don't let this sport coat fool you. Your boy used to kill all kinds of deer and ducks all the time before we had kids. You know what I'm saying? That was the, that was the, the hobby before kiddos. But, but I, I've seen lots of sunrises, and I'm sure you've experienced a sunrise before. And before that sunrise starts to peak up over that, that horizon, you know what I love? And before the colors start popping and before you start hearing all of the, the noises of a sunrise, the birds chirping, and all the things that come with a sunrise, do you, have you ever realized that right before that happens, that it's always the darkest, that it's always the calmest, that it's always the quietest, that it's always the stillest around, right? That's what's happening right before the sun comes up. And this is what I came to tell some of you today. I think that a couple thousand years ago on Friday and Saturday, the bad news was it was dark. It was some dark hours that they were going through. But this is what I know, is that the night is always darkest before the dawn. Right? The night is always darkest before the dawn. And I don't know what this means, but sometimes in life, it just seems like it's got to get worse before it can get better. Come on, somebody, right? Just because, like, man, you're trying everything, you're doing everything, and it just seems to keep getting worse. And I just came to encourage some of you today on Easter Sunday 2021 that the night is always darkest before the dawn. And some of you, you showed up at Purpose Church today, Easter Sunday, and I'll just tell you, you're walking through darkness right now. You're walking through pain right now. You're walking through literally hell on earth is what you think it is and you're experiencing. And you feel like your life is out of control. And, and Lord, I'm going to give it one last shot. I'm going to show up at Purpose Church and I'm just going to see if I experience you. I'm going to see if you speak to me because if you don't, I'm done. If you don't, I'm going to give up on my life or I'm going to run as hard as I can the other way. I, I'm giving you a shot, Jesus. Like literally, like, like it's dark in my life right now. But again... What I came to encourage some of you on Easter 2021 at Purpose Church in Murray, Kentucky, is that the night is always the darkest before the dawn. And this is what I believe for you, is that hope is coming, that breakthrough is coming, that healing is coming, that resurrection is coming, and that the good news is coming. Is there anybody that believes that? Come on, let's give Jesus a shout together. I believe that. Because this is what I know, and this is why church looks like a party and not a funeral. You know why? It's because the cross plus the resurrection changes. If I want to get gangster with it, I say everything. Come on, somebody, right? The cross plus Jesus changes everything. Like, see, the cross by itself on Friday and Saturday was bad news. Right? It meant that their Savior, our Savior was dead. It meant that there was no hope that we had, but the cross plus the resurrection changes everything and that's the good news of Easter that not only did Jesus die on a cross but the fact that hashtag he ain't in there and that there is a resurrection that took place means that you and I have the ability to get through anything that we come up against because the cross plus the resurrection it changes everything is there anybody that believes that in this place one more time let's give it up for King Jesus I believe that I believe that for all of us and I, I love this story. I just, I, I love the Bible. The Bible's so, so incredible. And, and, and I love just reading. I love how right here in verse 3, they're having this conversation, right? They're like, oh, we didn't pre-plan this. How are we supposed to move this stone? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to get there. We're a couple ladies. Oh, that's a big old stone. What are we supposed to do? Right? And when we see that, it says this. But as they arrived in verse 4, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Right? And then watch what this says right here. And I want, to, I want to talk to you about it just for a second. Is that when they entered the tomb, right? When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And the women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth 
who was crucified, but he ain't in here. Come on, somebody, right? I'm going to put that vernacular in the Bible right then. He ain't in here. He's risen from the dead. That right there should make us shout on Easter 2021. That right there, again, is why I'll tell you that church for us is always going to look like a celebration. Yes, there's going to be moments and there's going to be times that we get real serious. We're going to talk about sin because that's the bad news, right? The bad news is that we're all separated from God because of our sin. That, that, that and that's where I want to take this next little thing for you really quickly is this idea that, that every, every single funeral that Jesus ever attended, he crashed all of them. You know what I'm saying? He crashed every bit of them. And what I want to tell you about this specific scripture right here is that I just believe, this is kind of my idea or just kind of the thought that I want to give to you, is that the angel didn't move the stone so that Jesus could get out. You know, Jesus could do anything. He could walk through the stone if he wanted to. He could just like pop out on the other side. He did that. I believe the angel moved the stone so that we could get in. Right? I believe that. Watch what it said. When they entered the tomb. See, to me, that's the illustration that the tomb and the stone that was in front of it was the illustration of our unbelief. It was an illustration of our sin that had us separated from God. See, that's the bad news. The bad news is that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But again, I came to just tell you guys that God on Easter Sunday said, you know what? I'm going to move your unbelief. I'm going to move your sin out of the way. I will make a way by the death burial and resurrection of my son Jesus so that I can get straight to your heart, right? That's the good news of Easter is that the stone has been rolled away and so Jesus' cross plus the resurrection changes everything. Somebody shout, changes everything. everything. It changes everything and I believe that with all of my heart. What does it change for us? What does it change for us? I want you to write these down. Three things, the cross and the resurrection change for you and I. You ready? Number one is this. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. It's this, it changes our past. The cross and the resurrection changes our past. And maybe you've walked in this place today, and Kyle, if you don't mind, come up here and hit some of them spirit keys for me. That'd be great. I, I'll just tell you, some of you walk in here and, and we think, you know what, God could never forgive me. I've done too much. You're watching online and you're thinking, you know what, no, 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 I couldn't even step foot inside the church today because there's no way that God could forgive me. There's no way that he could love me. There's no way that I, I've done a whole lot. I've experienced a whole lot with a whole lot of people. There's no way that God could love me. And I just want to encourage you today that the cross plus the resurrection changes everything. Right? It changes everything. See, Jesus lived a perfect life. He lived a life that you and I could not live. And what the Bible tells us is that he became sin who knew no sin so that we might be made right with God. And so I just want to encourage some of you that you think, oh, i got to clean myself up. i got to make myself better. i got to get my stuff together first. Then I'll come to Jesus after that. And I just want to tell you, we could never clean ourselves up enough to come to Jesus. That's like getting a shower before you get a shower. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Just come as you are. And this is what I know is that Jesus says, you know what? The cross and the resurrection, Jesus literally defeats death and the grave and sin, and because Jesus wants to forgive you, if you say yes to him, this is what I know, is that sin no longer has any hold over you. That your past sin, your present sin, your future sin is nothing to the blood and the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he wants to forgive you. The cross plus Jesus changes everything. See, I love the scripture that says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone, and the new life has come. Right? The old life has gone, and the new life has come. Jesus wants to forgive you. And the resurrection and the cross changes our past. Number two, it changes our present. Just write that down. The cross and the, and the resurrection changes our present. And this is what I know about that, is that the fact that, you know what? Before I knew Jesus, I was living for me. You know what? Before I recognized that Jesus gave his life for me and died on a cross for me, I, I wanted to do whatever I could for myself. How can I make myself happy? How can I fulfill my dreams? How can I fulfill the things that I want to do? But I love how God, so, so we can get real churchy with it if you want me to, all right? Like the first little one could have been our past, 
could have been this thing called justification, okay? That's a big churchy word, I know. But justification is the fact that, you know what, Jesus is, is literally saving you. That the blood of Jesus, when you accept that, it's covered your past, present, future sins. Justification happens in a moment. But sanctification, that's the second big churchy word. That's what God is doing in our present. He's changing us. He, he's, he's, it's a process. It's something that we're walking through. And, and God's got to get the dusting out of me and got to put the spirit of Jesus inside of me even more. Right? I've got to have less of dusting, right? as, as, as the Bible would say, more of God, less of me. More of Jesus, less of me. And that's a process, a sanctification process where Jesus is saying, you know what? I want to put the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, I want that to be what's said of you. Sometimes that's not of me. So God is working us through a process. He's taking the desires that I would have for myself, and he's saying, you know what? No, I'm going to put my desires in you. So what God does and what the cross and the resurrection does when you and I say yes to a relationship with Jesus, it not only changes our past, it not only changes our present, the last thing that it does, I want you to write this down, is that it changes our future. So not only does our outlook here on earth change, right? Like we got, we got, we we are looking through a, a, a literally a lens of eternity now, and, and, and things that we would do before, like we want to start living for God, right? That's the thing, the desire that He begins to put on the inside of us that that the things of God begins to be the things said of me, and and, and so what happens though is as we're doing that, the, our future changes not only here but in eternity as well, right? Because when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, just like we sung a little while ago, because he lives, yes, I can face tomorrow, but even if tomorrow doesn't come, if I know Jesus, I know on the other side of eternity is heaven waiting for me. And I think we get it, I think heaven gets a bad rap, right? I think all of us can agree. Heaven, we probably think, you know, heaven, it's probably like this. Heaven, we think it's gonna be a bunch of, I like guess gonna be boring. Like, we think heaven's going to be a bunch of chubby little babies sitting on a cloud strumming a harp. Come on, somebody, right? You just little Gerber babies. That sounds like hell to me, not heavens. Come on, somebody, right? We'll talk about that some other time. But I'll just tell you, that's not heaven. That's not what heaven's going to be like. The cross and the resurrection changes our future. So guess what? We have a chance to look forward to heaven. You know why? Because heaven's going to be a party. Heaven is going to be loud. There's going to be a lot of hooping and hollering going on in heaven. Heaven is going to be filled with music. Heaven is going to be filled with food. Come on, Lord, just give me some of that Christian chicken, Chick-fil-A at the dinner table. Jesus, right? Give me some of them dumpling rolls here in Murray without the calories in Jesus' name, right? Let that, have, let that be at our table one day, right? It's going to be a party. That's, again, why we believe the church should look a whole lot more like a, a party than it does a funeral because the cross and the church, uh, the, the cross and the resurrection changes everything. But you and I, we got to make a decision. Am I going to let Jesus change me? Am I going to say yes to Jesus? You can't earn it. You can't be good enough. I couldn't be good enough. I couldn't, ple- I couldn't show up to church enough. I couldn't do enough good things in order to earn the salvation that Jesus is offering to you and I. And it becomes a decision that we have to make. And I, I heard actually Pastor Dino Rizzo uh, this last week, he was preaching and he said this, um, he actually gave this illustration. I just thought it was great and I just love to bring it to you. Uh, it was the illustration, it was this idea that all of us were in this courtroom of life. Right? Just imagine this courtroom is it, that, that you're in, it's our story, it's our life. And what happens is we enter into the courtroom, we have a seat at the table and right next to us is our, uh, is our defense attorney. His name's Jesus. I just imagine Jesus sitting there, and you look over, and you're like, Jesus, you didn't bring nothing with you. Like, where's the briefcase? You know what I'm saying? Like, where's the paper? Where's the pen? Like, you didn't bring nothing with him. He's just over there. He's just rubbing his hands. And I love that, that what happens next, if you could just imagine with me for just a second, that literally the prosecutor, the devil, busts through the back door. You imagine him busting through the back door, and he comes right into the courtroom. He's walking up. He looks over at you and me, and you know what he says? He says, I got you. I know you. I know what you've done. I know who you are. I know who you are when nobody's looking. I got you. And what happens is he has a seat, and you can imagine just in this courtroom, what happens is is the bailiff says, all rise, because the judge is coming in. If you can imagine the judge is walking in, and, Lord, it's the glory of God. You can't even see the judge. It's just so bright, like some of this. 
some of y'all in that vicinity right there because that thing is blinding some of y'all right there, right? Just blinding how good and incredible God is. And, and what happens is, is God just says, okay, hey, go ahead with the case. The judge says, go ahead with the case. Up jumps the prosecutor, right? Up jumps Satan. And he says, you know what, let me tell you a little bit something about them. Let, let, me, let me give you a little bit more information about the, her. Let me tell you what I know about Dustin McLean. And what he goes to do and what he proceeds to do is go through a long list of things that I had done. Things that I've messed up. Things I've said that have hurt people. The lies, the gossip, the, the mistakes that I have made over and over and over again. And he's good. He's got a good argument. I can just imagine this list is long, right? Can you imagine being there for multiple days and he's just going through the rap sheet of everything that I have done, everything that you have done. Finally gets to the end of probably day two or three. And he says, you know what? I rest my case. It's enough. I, I, I got you. Looks over at you. Can you imagine that for just a second? The devil looks at you and just says, I got you. I'll see you in hell. I can just imagine for a second the hopelessness that you and I would feel in that very moment as we sat there and Jesus didn't say anything. And you're thinking, you know, aren't you going to say something? I say anything? Defend? I, didn't, I don't think I really did that. Was I that bad? Jesus doesn't say anything, he's just rubbing his hands. I can imagine just for a second that Jesus, after he, after Satan sits back down at the table, can you imagine that Jesus would just stand to his feet, look over at Satan and say, you done? You done? And then I can imagine for a second that Jesus just looks at the glory of God, the, the, the throne, and just says, judge, may I approach the throne? Judge, Father, may I approach the throne? I can just imagine this scene happening and taking place and I don't know about you but as Jesus begins to walk towards the father I can just imagine him saying something like but I, I just want to tell you something father I want to show you something I, I want to present something to you on their behalf I want you to see these scars in my hands I want you to see these scars in my feet and I want you to know that guess what about everything that that dude just said about that guy was true everything that was said about her was true I know they've messed up I know they've been far from us. I know that they were running and they were doing all of those things. But you know what, Father? You asked me and you sent me your one and only son to pay for the penalty of sin. And I've done that. And I'm asking you to forgive my friend, not on their behalf, not on what they've done, not on how good they've been, not on how many times they've showed up to Purpose Church, but because of what I've done. Here's the scars. He's accepted it. She's accepted it. He's confessed it. He's asked me to be his advocate. He's asked me to be his lawyer. He's asked me to be his Lord and his King. And if you can imagine for just a second that God says, you know what, son, you're so right. Man, you're so right. Can you imagine for just a second that, Jesus, that, that God, the judge, looks out at Satan and you and Jesus, and he says, you know what? Case dismissed. All is forgiven. Welcome home. Case dismissed. All is forgiven. Welcome home. Don't be alarmed. Let me tell you something. The one you're looking for is Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. But guess what? He ain't in there. He's risen from the dead. And I'll just tell you, church, that's our story. That's who we are. That's all of humanity. That all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But because of the scars that are in the hands and feet of Jesus, and because of the cross, and because of the resurrection, that you and I, it changes everything for us. It changes everything for us. But it starts with a decision to say yes to that decision that Jesus made to go to the cross for you and I. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you're watching online, I'm going to ask you to do the very same thing. As you bow your heads and close your eyes, if it's safe for you, I would just encourage you really fast. that The Bible tells us, as we've talked about today, that all of us, we've sinned, we've fallen short. We've all made mistakes. We've all messed up. But Jesus, in His love for us, in His grace for us, in His heart, have a relationship with you and I he came and he died on a cross the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood without payment there is no forgiveness of sin and Jesus became that payment Jesus became that ransom the scars that are in his hands 
the scars that are in his feet, the blood that was shed, the body that was broken, should have been us. But Jesus, in his love for you and me, gave his life. And the Bible would tell us that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. Maybe you're in here and you need to make that decision today. Maybe you're watching online. You need to make that decision today to follow Jesus. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to say a simple prayer. I'm not going to, you don't have to say it word for word, but I just want you to mean it in your heart. Just mean it in your heart and just say, Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross. I believe that you gave your life for me, and I put my full faith and trust in what you did, and I believe that you got out of the grave, and I ask for your forgiveness. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Savior of my life. And help me from this day forward live on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose, for you. And maybe you're in this room. Maybe you're watching online. And you've just prayed that. You just said something like that. But you meant it in your heart. And you just said yes to a relationship with Jesus. Here's what I'm asking you to do. All across this room, I'm asking you to do one thing first. And I'm asking you to do a second thing next. Is would you just raise your hand and say, hey, that's me. I just said yes to a relationship with Jesus. You just got to stick it up. And you can put it right back down. Raise your hand up, put it right back down. Awesome. Here's what I'm going to do something even more. I'm going to ask you to take a step, even a greater step. And I'm going to ask you to do this. Our team is fixing to move in just a second. When I tell you to, to, to get up, I'm going to ask you, if you just said yes to a relationship with Jesus, we've got people on both sides of this room right now that would love to celebrate with you love to, uh, to just, man, walk you through what the next steps look like, love to encourage you, love to give you a Bible that we would love to give you, uh, and we would love to have a chance to do that, and so I'm going to ask you to do that. In, in, in three seconds, I'm going to say three, two, one, I'm going to have you stand up, and I want you to make your way that way. Our team's going to move with you. One, two, three. Just move that way. If you just said yes to the relationship with Jesus, you're not the only one moving. You're not the only one moving. If you need to move, you can move. pray for us really quick. God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for every person that's tuned in online, is watching with us. We thank you for every person in this room, God, and the sound of our voice that, that literally I pray that the word of God would literally go forth and you would do something incredible. Jesus, we honor you. We love you. We thank you that next steps happen today, that salvation is taking place in this room and as people watch online. And God, we are so thankful for that opportunity that we get to celebrate you being alive. And because of that, you've changed everything. And so, Jesus, we honor you. We love you. We thank you. And it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, I said, everybody said, come on, why don't you stand to your feet? And as you stand to your feet, can we put our hands together and clap for everybody that just made a decision to follow Jesus? Come on, I think we'd be a little louder than that in this place. And maybe you're watching online. I would just tell you, if you could just text the word purpose to the number 270-229-6488, that would be awesome. It lets us know that you made that decision, and we would love to follow up with you again this week. That would be awesome. Come on, one more time. Can we celebrate King Jesus? Let's put our hands together and thank him for what he's done.